Hello, welcome to Proko. My name is Stan Bokopenko. In this video, I'm going to critique the pelvis lesson assignments that you guys submitted. So thank you for everyone who submitted the assignments in the Facebook group. If you're not part of the group and you want to participate, you can go to facebook.com slash groups slash anatomy for artists or just click in the link in the description. Okay, so this first critique is for goal Sinosi. Now when I look at this, uh, I can see the perspective is off. And that's actually the main thing that you guys were struggling with, is the perspective of the bucket. And that's understandable because this bucket is quite complex. You know, it tapers from top to bottom, um, it's tilted forward, it's squished from back to front. So it's not a simple cylinder, it's kind of complicated. So I want to go over the perspective of the bucket one more time, maybe a little bit slower, and go over a few really important points that I've noticed you guys are doing wrong. First thing to start with is to get the angle of the bucket, the tilt, the long axis. So when I look at yours, I'm seeing this is the angle of the long axis. Okay, so I'm gonna draw that angle, something like that. Just draw it in lightly. The second thing is to get the angle of the ellipse on the top cap. So this top plane that you drew. And you actually drew that angle correctly. Um, and let me talk a little bit about how you figure that out. So the first thing I imagine is an angle perpendicular to the long axis. Okay, so that's perpendicular to the line I just drew. Then I imagine the angle from side to side. So the, the angle you drew here. Okay, so let's, let's get that angle in there. Now the angle of the ellipse will be in between those two. Quite complicated. Now the reason it's gonna be between those is because the bucket is squished a little bit. So let's say you have a normal cylinder which is perpendicular, the ellipse is perpendicular. The more you squish the cylinder, the more the, the angle of the ellipse will go toward the squishing angle. So let's say that we squish this along this angle, right? We step on it here and we compress from here to here. So these points go this way. The more we squish this, the more this cylinder will become like this. It's being flattened. So the angle of the ellipse will go from here to here. At a completely flattened uh, extreme, it's just going to be a straight line, right? We completely flatten that cylinder and it's a, just a straight line across. So since we're flattening this bucket from front to back, this angle of the ellipse will be somewhere between this angle and this angle. So now that we've found that angle, we can draw the ellipse. And you don't have to draw the ellipse in one shot. Okay, you can construct it with a few lines. So you notice how I'm just kind of ghosting it in in sections. It's easier to, to do that rather than trying to go one clean sweep and, and connecting those dots perfectly. Okay, so there's my top cap, my top plane of the bucket. Now I'm going to find the side plane. And notice how I'm still following this angle here, this, this tilting angle that, I've, that I established in the beginning. Now it's going to look weird. It's going to look like, wait a minute, shouldn't that be like this? Well, no, we're squishing that cylinder. If we draw it like this, we're just making it perpendicular. We're now, we're just kind of making it a normal cylinder. But since it's squished, it's, it's not going to look like a normal cylinder. Okay, so same thing here, this 
The ellipse down here will have that same angle and it's going to be a little bit wider because we're looking down at it more. So there's my bucket. Now we can find some more angles that will help us draw the pelvis in their incorrect perspective. We already have the line from, left, from the left side to the right side. Now let's find the line from front to back. And this is the middle. I always want to make sure it crosses that. From there I can drop a line down the front plane. And if I find the middle of the bottom plane, I can keep these lines going around the bucket so it's top plane, front plane, bottom plane, and back plane. And as I do this I want to make sure that the lines taper correctly. These lines go from front to back, right? So they're getting smaller as we go back. So they need to taper toward a vanishing point that way. If I draw this line like that. Now these lines get wider as they go to the back. That's wrong. Things get smaller as they go away from us. So I gotta make sure that these angles relate to each other correctly. Same thing with these angles. This one and this one are going down away from us. So they should taper downward, get smaller. Okay, we can do the same thing with this, the side to side, we'll continue around the side plane, down the bottom plane, and now I'm noticing there's an issue. Okay, so we're looking from the left. That means that if I draw a line from left to right, they need to converge to the right side. Currently, these lines are getting wider this way. They're going away from each other. Now, you can always think of a box. If this is the front plane, and we can see a little bit of the side plane, see, we're looking from the left side. And we can see this left side of this box, just like we can see the left side of the cylinder. So this edge is farther away from us than this edge. That means these lines should converge. So that means these lines should converge to the right, but they're not. So I'm going to correct myself. Something was a little bit off because my drawing is a little bit sketchy. It's not perfect. My lines aren't perfectly straight. My lips, you know, I have a line here and a line here, so I haven't established the exact position of that edge. So things are going to be a little bit off. But if you check yourself at every step, you can make sure that you're pretty close. Okay, so that looks like it's better perspective. So now when I draw, let's say if I find these corners at the bottom of the ischiums, I need to make sure that they are converging. They're parallel to all of these, right? So that would be something like, some, somewhere around here would be those dots. Notice how you are drawing a line this way here. You're drawing a line this way here and you're drawing a line this way here. Notice how your front plane is converging as it gets closer to us. It's doing the opposite of what it should be doing. If you establish the perspective correctly up to this point, before you start drawing the pelvis inside the bucket, if all these angles are correct, the pelvis inside the bucket will be more correct. So, Make sure that all your angles in the bucket are working before you start drawing the pelvis. Let's move on to Sonal Prabhuni. Sonal, the thing I'm seeing with yours is you are drawing these forms, the forms of the pelvis, as very thin shapes. They're two-dimensional. You need to show some thickness to these forms. Um, so, for example, right in here, 
you showing the outline, but then there's no depth to these bones. Show this. Show that there's a top plane along the iliac crest. There's a front plane in here. You're doing that on this side, so that's nice. You're showing some thickness here, but then this angle is wrong. It should follow this angle from, front, from side to side. And then drop it down, showing the thickness in there. Same thing in here. You, you're showing a little bit of thickness, but it's just not enough. The bone would snap like a potato chip if it was that thin. Okay, something like that. And then you're not showing any thickness at all on this side. Okay, so same thing on this one. Um, looks like on this one you're showing some kind of lip, but it's not boxy enough. Because it's not, you're not showing angles, it doesn't look like it's a top plane or bottom plane or side plane. In fact, if, it, if there was a top plane, you wouldn't see it from this angle. Right? It would, it would kind of go like that the thickness would disappear toward the top. But you're showing it all the way around. So it looks more like a lip around the whole thing rather than uh, thickness. This one's too tall. So with this one, you just didn't get the proportions of the bucket correct. Now I want to contrast that with Bei Su Hyung's work. Notice how much thickness he's showing. And this feels so much more solid. It feels like he's understanding the forms. He could feel, you could feel them in space, right? It's not like a paper cutout that's, uh, that's skewed. He's really thinking about the perspective and the angle of all these things. So very nice job. Um, I really don't have a critique for you other than just showing that you did a good job showing the thickness. Next critique is for Rafael Ventura. Rafael, your lines are just too wobbly. Um, when you're drawing structure, when you're drawing uh, something that requires a lot of form, a lot of blockiness, it's good to, to draw it with a lot of straights. So I would say fill up pages and pages of straight lines. Okay, draw a dot on the page, draw another dot, and try to connect them. Okay? Practice drawing straight lines and make sure that they feel straight. And also make sure that you can draw specific angles. So if I want to draw a horizontal, I should be able to draw a, an accurate horizontal line. If I want to draw 45 degrees, I should be able to draw something near 45. Notice how you're constructing things with curves. You're like you're drawing the outline of things, uh, and even in areas like this where you're indicating a front plane, but you're kind of doing it with with little um, just little swipes instead of clean lines. This would feel so much more structured if you had just drawn. A box, a clean box for that iliac crest. See how much more solid that feels? Um, much better down here. That's a nice line. That's a nice line. These are nice lines. Right here, these are all nice lines. So this drawing down here in the bottom right is your most successful one. Try to redo all these other ones. One, two, three. Do those again and do them with more structure. I think you were maybe warming up a little bit, um, and so your lines were a little sketchy, you were following contours too much, uh, and then you slowly got better. Next up is Francisco Franzini. Okay, Francisco, I think you need to study the proportions of the bucket. Your bucket shape is very inconsistent. This one is very squished from top to bottom. This one is very tall, and this one's somewhere in between, a little bit closer to what the bucket actually is, uh, but still maybe a little bit too flat. 
In the Facebook comments, Rebecca Shea provided uh, a link to her blog where she actually measured the bucket and found the, the height, the width, the depth, um, and you can see all these numbers here. I really like how she went that extra mile and she studied, you know, she's studying the dimensions, trying to figure it out. Um, this is good. Ultimately, we are visual people, I'm assuming, since you're, you know, you're, you like to draw. Um, and learning these numbers might not really help a lot of us. Um, it just, this isn't visual. It's, it's numeric and it, it's kind of hard to imagine 16 by 11 by 9. Um, so I think the better approach to learning the proportions of the bucket is uh, what I provided in the premium section. We have these models, right? We have the model of the bucket and the pelvis inside of it and we can rotate it, we can look at it from any angle and we could really just study what the bucket looks like from all these different angles. So the better approach is to just draw a lot of these buckets and just ingrain it in your visual memory. So then you'll know oh, this bucket just feels too tall or this just feels too wide. Um, it's better to go off of instinct than to say, oh, is that 16 by 11? Hmm, no, it's more like 18 by 11. You know, it's just not going to work that way. So if you have the premium membership, I really recommend going in there, rotating these from different angles and drawing the bucket over and over and over again. You have this ghosted architecture and you can see through it and then there's the pelvis inside of it. So start with these lines of the bucket. You know, you've got the lips of the top cap, you got the front, you know, front to back, side to side, all that stuff. Draw it in and then draw the pelvis inside of it and simplify the pelvis too, how we did it. Instead of drawing all of these curves, you would just drop that line straight down. You guys probably already know about this, so let's move on. Next up is Perka Harvala. Uh, Perka, proportional issues. So, let's see, this one, too flattened, top to bottom. Um, you could see, actually, it just feels taller. This pelvis just feels taller. Uh, this one looks like it's the correct height, but it's just not wide enough. Like you didn't expand these wings out far enough. So you need to show a little bit more of a taper. Um, in fact, that taper is consistent throughout. Look at, look at these three on the side. Almost vertical. You're showing very little taper. So you need to really push that bottom plane to be smaller on all of these guys. Okay, so that's a consistent issue. Whenever you're doing some, something consistently, um, that means that you just have that ingrained in your mind already and you, you have to reverse it by doing a lot, uh, a lot of drawings of it correctly. Otherwise, you're just going to continue making the same mistake. I, have, I had that with... Um, quick sketch drawings where I would consistently make people's legs too long. I would just keep doing that, keep doing that, and I wouldn't, I didn't know why, I mean I didn't even notice it because it was like that's what I imagined it to be. And the only way I got over it was to have my instructor come by and constantly say, hey those legs are too long. And I would have to just make them shorter than I thought it should be. Um, but eventually it just kind of clicked. I would slowly take my perception of it closer to what it should be. Okay, let's move on to Brian Williamson. Brian, looks like you were having a hard time finding the angle of the top ellipse. Because you drew five pelvises, looks like they're from the same angle. Um, except this one, you drew each one with a different angle for the top plane. So let's look at them. This one is pretty much a circle. Maybe it's a little bit longer in this direction. Uh, this one looks like the angle of the ellipse is going this way. This one, the angle of the ellipse is going this way. This one, maybe like that. Uh, or actually, 
No, this one, this one's more like this. And then this one is also very similar to that. So notice you put five different angles for that top cap. Now, which of them is correct? Well, let's figure it out. So the angle of the pelvis is like that. That's the long axis. So let's draw that long axis. Now, the perpendicular angle to that would be this. But remember, it's the angle of the lips is not going to be perpendicular because it's squished. So we have to now find the angle from side to side, which looks like in all of them, they're consistently horizontal. Okay, so if we draw that horizontal, that's that, and the angle of the ellipse will be somewhere in between that, like this. There's the angle that we need to use. And so which one's the winner? Ta-da, this one right here matches the, the one that I found here. So this one, you looks like made it perpendicular to the long axis. So this one matches this angle. This one, not sure what you did there. You were maybe trying to make it uh, kind of perpendicular to front and back. Not sure. This one, also very close actually. So these two are almost the same angle. Um, this one looks like you were also maybe trying to make it uh, perpendicular or parallel to the front and back. Uh, so hopefully that helps you figure that out. Uh, when I draw these, I don't actually draw all these angles. I just imagine them in my mind. Okay, if I just, I'll draw the long axis and then in my mind I'll imagine this, I'll imagine side to side, and then I'll draw this. And so I'll, I would only have these two, these two lines. And then I would draw the, uh, the top cap, bottom cap, and so on, okay? So it might take a little bit of time to imagine these things, to be able to see that in your mind, but um, the more angles you draw, the more lines you draw, the more boxes you draw, uh, the easier it will be for you to imagine the stuff in your mind. Um, so like we, I keep saying, Marshall keeps saying, draw things around you, um, construct them into boxes. It really does help. It's in everything you draw. You're going to have to draw them in perspective, unless you're drawing abstract. But if you're taking these classes, you're probably not drawing abstract. So focus on drawing angles and boxes and geometric primitives. Um, it'll really help you. Final person. We're down to the very end is Joseph, uh, Joseph Silvokami. So Joseph, it looks like you did something that actually I didn't assign, but I should have. It, we were drawing the bucket and the pelvis and how it fits inside the bucket, um, but we never really looked at how it fits on a model, how it actually fits on a real body. Um, so thank you for doing this so I could point it out to you guys. Um, however, it looks like you didn't position it inside the body correctly. The main thing is you're drawing them just too small. The bucket will actually or the pelvis will actually be on the surface uh, of the body all the way around the sides. Uh, you know how the aces points in the front actually protrude. Uh, and even on, even on heavier people, that bony area of the iliac crest will be very close to the surface. There will be some fat, but usually above and below. Um, unless it, you know, that person is very overweight, then um, everything is covered. But uh, usually the iliac crest will be very close to the surface and so this distance that you're showing here is just too much. Um, if you have a model and you, you just can't figure out where to put the bucket, there's a few things you can look for. The landmarks, the, the bony parts that will be on the surface, those are very important. Um, 
It's hard to tell from your um, rough drawing of the contours exactly what the model, you know, what position the model is in. Um, but I'm just going to assume some things. For example, the pubic bone is, will be somewhere in here. Uh, iliac crest will end right there-ish at the aces points and then right there on the other side. So I got this triangle shape, right? I'm going to draw these points on the side here so I can draw a little bit bigger. So something like this. That's generally the relationship between all these points. So you got the angle between the aces points and then you got the pubic bone down here. So this is about the triangle I'm seeing uh, in your drawing. Okay, now I'm going to take these landmarks and draw a bucket that fits on those landmarks. So let's see. So I know that this pubic bone is going to be the edge of the bucket. It sits at the very front. Okay, so I could kind of draw the angle of that bucket. Um, and I'm, I know that the angle of the bucket is something like this. Okay, and then we know that the aces points are going to be slightly forward from the center of the top cap, right? It's, these are not the middle. This is not the center line of the top. The center line will be slightly back. Um, and then, so I'm going to just get a really rough shape in there for where I think the bucket would fit. This is going to be a two-dimensional shape. Something like this. This kind of uh, helps me to visualize that bucket. Um, very rough. I might deviate from that later once I get more points in. And I'm going to adjust this line real quick. It should go right through the pubic bone. Not in front of it. Okay, there you go. So now I have to figure out the top cap which is going to be at an angle about like this. Now it has to connect these aces points and it has to touch the front of the bucket and the back. So basically I'm just trying to find an ellipse that'll connect that or connect all those points and that ellipse needs to be at roughly the, that correct angle. That long axis should be should be something like this. I can maybe taper this a little bit more. Now that I have that top ellipse, it kind of helps me realize that my initial shape was just a little bit too flat, or not flat, but the too parallel. The bottom needs to taper more. Okay, so now I got the top cap, I got the sides. Now let's find the bottom cap, and that's going to be at the same angle. I just got to find an ellipse. And let's see, maybe this, this is a, a little bit too tall for a female pelvis. Just a little bit. I'm going to bring this up. Because remember, a female pelvis is going to be a little bit wider and shorter. Okay, so we're searching right now. We're exploring. We're not really sure uh, exactly where these lines are going to go. We're trying it out, analyzing it. If something's off, we adjust. And we slowly get closer and closer to the correct shapes. Okay, that looks about right for that bottom cap. Now this point right here that I have, which is kind of like my center line or my center point, uh, it's not really the center. So I have to make some adjustments uh, to this. Let's see, the center of that ellipse will be about there. So that's the center horizontal or center from side to side. Um, and then front to back, well, 
looks like if this is if the pubic bone is right there the front is right about there so if I just connect that to the middle that's the angle from front to back you do the same thing for the bottom cap okay so that's pretty good for the bucket I'm just gonna cut out that wedge just take it one step further. So remember, the pubic bone is about halfway down. At this point, um, I made it shorter. I made this bucket shorter to be a female pelvis. Um, so I'm gonna just bring this pubic bone just a little bit higher. Our initial landmark was just maybe a little bit off unless the female that you were drawing has a taller pelvis, then that would have been correct. And then from that center line, we could wrap a rubber band, so another ellipse around there, kinda a little bit lighter. And then from these aces points, we'll just drop verticals. So that's the step down. And there's that edge between the front plane and the top plane. Okay, there's a pretty good looking bucket. If I wanted to, I could put another layer over this and clean up my lines a bit because they're kind of messy, we were exploring, but I'll just leave it at this. So hopefully that helps. Uh, very good exercise. Thank you uh, for, for showing that, Joseph. And that ends all the critiques. Whew. Uh, thank you guys for submitting all your drawings. Uh, I'm going to continue these critiques for the rest of the bone exercises. If you'd like to submit your assignment for all the future lessons, uh, go to proco.com slash groups and uh, it'll, it'll forward you to the Facebook groups that we are using right now. Um, and there's a great community out there. so. You know, join in, help people, help each other learn, uh, critique other people's work if you see a mistake, submit your work, people will critique you, um, and just keep the community going. Uh, I'm really happy to see how much you guys are actually helping each other. It's been, it's been a, a, a great thing. I'm really glad I, I uh, started up that group. You guys were asking for it for quite a while. So, all right, enough blabbering. See you next time. Hey, have you seen my new app, Skelly, the Posable Anatomy Model for Artists? Go to proca.com slash skelly app or click this button to get it on iOS or Android. If you like this video, don't be all selfish. Share it with your friends. And if you want to be updated about new videos, click this button or go to proca.com slash subscribe. Also, check out the Anatomy for Artists group on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash anatomy for artists.